Listen, do you hear that? I, th I think that's, I think that's the smell of GPU prices becoming reasonable again. And that's why we're able to build a PC. What's up everyone? I am Brayathorn, welcome to the channel. And uh, there's an awful lot of parts around me and uh, there's a whole lot of story behind it. I, of course, if you're new here, I run a channel where I help people find pre-built PCs. I help them avoid some mistakes that are commonly made when buying a pre-built PC. And uh, that's been the answer to the shortage of GPUs. But it seems like the shortages have been getting a bit better. Uh, now, there are still plenty of overpriced scalped parts out there for, you know, when it comes to a GPU, but w if you look in the right place or if you watch the EVGA website sharply enough, then you'll find that, yes, you can get a GPU for MSRP at times or at least something resembling it. So while we're talking about learning, I may as well just tell you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is a huge online learning community with thousands of classes for the creative and curious. They're adding new premium classes every day, many of which are less than 60 minutes long with short, concise lessons that are easy to watch in your spare time. One class I'm taking right now is Animating with Ease in Adobe After Effects by Jake Bartlett. This is version two. He made this class a while back, and since he learned some new techniques, he updated it. This class has so many things that I need to learn about Adobe After Effects, which I'm still pretty new to, especially when it comes to the speed graph, which is what actually makes animations less linear and flow better, a little bit more bouncy. I highly recommend this class if you're interested in making animations of your own. And you can check out the class really easily too, for no cost, because the first thousand people to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get down there, click the link and get started learning today. Anyway, this right here is actually kind of an odd story and one that some of you may find a bit frustrating. I know that I did myself. Um, there's a reason that there are two motherboards here, two processors here, two, two sets of RAM. It, okay, so if I could do a TLDR for the whole story, uh, I would just say one name and that would be Fuzzy Boy 202 Anyone who's been in my chat more than once or even once will understand already what I'm getting at. So I decided I wanted to do more build content and there was no better place to start than with uh, making a PC for the um, boy who was fuzzy himself, the one who has been waiting so long since joining my community nine months ago to get a PC. Uh, we were all guessing that he wouldn't get a PC until, you know, 50 series NVIDIA cards came out. But once I indicated that I would be willing to build a PC, um, of course, Fuzzy jumped on jumped on that. So Fuzzy only wants to game. Fuzzy boy only wants to game. So I told Fuzzy boy, all right, well, we should go Intel 12th gen, but you certainly don't need to get anything like a 12900K. A 12700K is a great, great candidate. As a matter of fact, a 12600K would be just fine for us, just a, a gaming PC. Uh, but 12700K, you know, why not? It's within budget for sure. And, uh, you know, say you look at tech power-ups, you know, charts that they have, and you'll find that on average, it's within one or 2% of gaming performance. Mostly 12900K is gonna benefit you more for content creation. So Fuzzy's like, okay, cool. That sounds great. Um, I bought the 12900K anyway. Why don't you get me a 12700K and you can keep it. And I was like, what? He said, no, 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 no. That's my payment to you for building a PC. I was like, okay, but that's it. He was like, yeah, that's it. I gave Fuzzy Boy an entire PC part picker list of all the things he needed to get, and including saying, hey, you know, it's, uh, it's still not super cost effective to go with DDR5 memory. You should probably go with a DDR4 motherboard. You're just gaming. You don't need anything with a ton of USB or anything. It doesn't have to be super feature rich, just something that'll do 12th gen Intel and have some good features to it, good power delivery, all that. And he's like, all right, cool. And he bought a ASUS ROG Strix Z690E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, which has a ton of features that are ideal for a content creator. And also it uses DDR5. He said it was an accident. 
yeah, right. I don't believe you for a second. And then he says, whoa, you know, you could just, I did order the DDR4 memory. So uh, why don't you just grab me a DDR4 board and you can keep the DDR5 one. And I'm, I'm like, okay, man. Uh, but that's it. You got to stop. Like, that's fine. I, I, I'm not planning on upgrading my build. This is 5900X and, and a 3080Ti. Just like the one I recommended for you, 3080Ti. That's a great, that's pretty much top dog when it comes to a strictly, well, I mean, if you care about, you know, ray tracing and whatnot, it's a top dog uh, gaming card out there. If, if, you know, nobody really needs a 3090 just for a gaming PC. That's more for like, you know, 3D animation and, you know, rendering effects and, uh, video editing and things like that. He's like, ah, oh, video editing. Okay, cool. And of course I woke up one morning and he said, hey, I bought a 3090. So uh, why don't you hand over that 3080 Ti. I literally could not stop this man. And uh, you guys need to understand, um, I, I didn't ask for any of this. Uh, Fuzzy is just one of the troop of people within my community who during the streams uh, like to make me uncomfortable with generosity and find it to be the absolute best way to troll me because they smelled weakness. Because yeah, I, generosity does catch me off guard and I, I'm, I'm not super comfortable with it, but they just, just love to pour it on. And uh, I'm a lucky guy. I mean, that means a lot to me. I, I didn't, I, I, I still, this is too much, but I will say, uh, it was purchased for MSRP. Crazy. I know, but purchased for MSRP. So yes, this is uh, going to be replaced with my barely used 3080Ti. Trust me, I don't get much time to game these days. This is gonna go towards working, but that you can see where this is going. So um, uh, DDR5, this is not gonna be for Fuzzy's build. This is there. Um, what do you get when you wanna get a great uh, no-nonsense gaming board that has all the features and power delivery you need. You get Asus Tough Gaming. Awesome board. Now in this video, we're not gonna do the build. Right now, I, I kinda wanna do what like Jay's Two Cents does. I look up to the guy, why wouldn't I do what he does? And kinda go over the plan. I'm hoping that through a video like this, you guys could uh, maybe learn a little bit about planning out a build and sort of how to spec out your system to make sure everything is compatible and and uh, how it works because there are pitfalls when it comes to parts compatibility, as you'll hear. I know when you want a no-nonsense gaming-centric motherboard uh, that will have great power delivery, great VRM cooling, and all the features that you specifically need for gaming. Asus Tough Z690 Plus Wi-Fi D4, so DDR4. Now, I want you guys to, to, to keep this in mind when you're looking at motherboards. You're gonna see that they put gaming on certain very high-end, very costly motherboards. And these gaming motherboards have a lot of features that you don't need for gaming. This one in particular has, I think, 10 USB Type-A ports on the back, 10. A streamer might need something like that or at a certain point, definitely a content creator as well. Lots of devices connected, external storage, things like that. This one in particular has six Type-A USB ports. When I say Type-A, you know, it's just a rectangular one that you say, not like a Type-C USB port. And that is more than enough for a gamer. Mouse, keyboard, headset, whatever, there you go. So don't let the marketing fool you into spending double the amount that you need to for a gaming motherboard. This thing is going to be awesome. Even if you were running a 12900K, which again, for gaming is not really necessary. The, the gap between the 12700K and the 12900K for gaming is not that wide, but when it comes to something like content creation or compiling code, it is a wider gap. Even the 12900K only requires a 10 plus one phase power delivery with DRMOS. This has 14 plus one on a much lower cost board. The, the Z690E gaming Wi-Fi has 18 plus one. That is way overkill if you're trying to run a gaming processor. So just keep that in mind when you're shopping for your own motherboard, if you're just gonna be gaming, you don't, you don't even necessarily need the tough gaming. This one is just a little beefier, has a few extra features, you know, Wi-Fi 6, all the good stuff in here. So just shop wisely. And of course, if you need, uh, to have someone help you with a PC part picker list, hopefully one that you'll actually listen to, um, you can come by the stream. I stream uh, at twitch.tv slash every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And you can come in, jump in the queue, 
And as soon as I get to you, I will help you one-on-one -on -one with your own pre-built or custom PC shopping or a PC part picker list if we can find you a decent price on a GPU. Now, if Fuzzy Boy was gonna be actually getting the most for his money and keeping the 3090 and the 12900K instead of giving them to me as some payment for doing the build, these require a good amount of power. The 12900K can turbo quite a bit and it can consume a lot of power for a long time. And then the 3090 has been known to power spike for a few milliseconds up to 500 watts. That is roughly double what it's rated to pull. So if there's not enough headroom from the power supply to cover that, then you have a system shutdown. Just shuts down on you. So this is what Fuzzy Boy ordered. It's a 1300 watt 80 plus gold power supply from EBGA, the 1300 GT. Now considering this is a processor Fuzzy Boy's getting and the 3080 Ti is not quite as demanding as a 3090, Fuzzy Boy's getting my 1000 watt power supply, 80 plus gold EBGA. Actually a slightly higher model than this one. So that's a nice little upgrade. So you kind of get the point by now. Now, what case are we putting this all in? Well, you've been staring at it, of course, it is the inimitable fractal torrent. This thing is absolutely monstrous. Let me ask you this question. For those of you who are cool like me and watch Gamers Nexus, how many times have you heard Steve say this? Here's a crazy start to a case review. We like this case. This is the Fractal Torrent. It's actually been really nice to work with, which is a great change of pace. I, uh, three? I think three. Well, this was the case of the year for last year, and the Fractal Torrent is an absolute monster with two giant, thick, 180 millimeter fans in the front with also somewhat thick 140 millimeter fans on the bottom. All five of these fans are running as intake. And when I say intake, I mean, they're pulling a lot of air into this system. The front 180 millimeter fans are 36 millimeters in depth. Like they're thick. And then, of course, this is not perforated here on the top. There's no holes in the top for air to escape from, and that might seem like a problem, but no, this is how it's designed. The entire back of this case is perforated. So, and you can put a 120 or a 140 millimeter fan on the back as well for exhaust, of which I have actually ordered one to match the 140 millimeter fans that are on the bottom, and it's the same kind of fan, and I'll have that on the back. That's coming in Thursday. But there's only one way for air to escape from this highly positive air pressure situation here, that's through the back. Now, you can change up this uh, the setup here with the radiator and an all-in-one liquid cooler, but no. That is not what I recommend for this case. What I recommend for this case is an absolute legend. That is a Noctua NHD15 in Chromax Black. Oh man, this thing is going to be an absolute wind tunnel and it's gonna cool that 12700K like nobody's business. This is overkill for a 12700K, very likely. So um, yeah, considering the fact that pretty sure Fuzzy Boy is not really gonna be getting into overclocking anytime soon, this is overkill, but you know, it was within budget and we went ahead and did it. So this does mean that I have double the work now because I have to uh, rebuild my own system eventually, but also I got to build a fuzzy system. But let me tell you something. I have never been happier to build a PC for someone in my entire life. And I've rarely met someone as gleefully generous as Fuzzy Boy 202. So I can't think of anyone more deserving. Um, and I just, I'm going to put a lot of attention and attention to detail and personal effort into this. And I do have a few surprises for Fuzzy Boy on the build. So you'll be seeing the build video come up later this month. I hope you guys are gonna stick around and get subscribed so you can watch that. I've also got a PC review coming up as well from these guys right here who tried to bribe me by sending me a, a lovely shirt, but actually I think they just, they just do that. That's just part of sending out a PC. I think they just give you a shirt. I'm special, damn it. Anyway, uh, but I'll take it. <laughs> Now, since this is primarily just a gaming PC, uh, we really don't need a ton of storage, which is why the three M.2 sockets you get on this are plenty, especially since the main drive we're putting in is a Rocket Q4 NVMe 4.0 from Sabrent. 
So this is Gen 4, PCIe Gen 4. It's two terabytes. It's blazing fast, and it's not even, you don't even really need Gen 4 speeds for gaming. Gen 3 is already very fast when it comes to load times, especially if you're used to an old hard, you know, mechanical hard drive, and even if you're used to a SATA 3, 2.5 inch SSD. But no, this is a very high performance drive, and I expect it to do very well in this system. And there will still be two more slots on this motherboard for expansion later on. Not to mention this case also features four dedicated spots for 2.5 inch SSDs and two dedicated spots for 3.5 inch mechanical hard drives. So there's plenty of options for expansion later on. And now as for the RAM for these two systems, well, because this is basically, this is the tale of two systems, right? So what you're looking at here for this build is 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB RT, and that's gonna be uh, DDR4 3600, cast latency 16. So this is extremely fast memory for DDR4. I'm an absolutely great pick for this build right here. Um, for mine, it's gonna be the Kingston Fury uh, 32 gigs, DDR5 5200 megatransfers per second at uh, CL40. And um, this is just what I could could get. Uh, you, you know, I, you can't really, it's, 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 it's a lot easier to get DDR5 now. It's not really being scalped anymore. It still is actually, if you go and look on Newegg, Newegg still has their, their Newegg sellers selling this stuff for like $800, $900, um, or at least for the Corsair stuff. You'll just see all kinds of crazy deals that they just haven't taken down because they refuse to not get that, you know, double or triple MSRP for the RAM. But no, you can find this stuff for MSRP now, but it is still, fairly cost prohibitive over the prices of DDR4 when it comes to price to performance. It's just, that's a DDR5 board. What am I gonna do? This is gonna be super rad, I'm gonna love it, and uh, it's gonna do great. It's supposed to chew through video editing, which means more content for you guys, which is one of Fuzzy's goals, apparently. He told me that he just wants me to be able to make more content. Bless your heart, I want that too. I don't want Adobe to crash anymore. That would. That would be great if that could stop happening. So I'm not letting this go unanswered. I control with the best of them too. I've got a few surprises up my sleeve as well, Fuzzy, so I hope you like them. And uh, if you wanna see those surprises, be sure to get subscribed so you see the build video when it comes out. I'm gonna put a lot of time and effort into this one. Now, if you're not trying to build something that is, of course, of this level, you just wanna get into PC gaming, of course, we can do a build like that too. If you want a PC part picker list so you can maybe, you know, get your own build going. Absolutely, come by the stream, I'll help you out and I'll be happy to do so because mostly higher end cards are starting to get more reasonable and mid-range, whereas the budget entry level cards are still kind of ridiculous, but only relatively so. It's getting a little bit more in reach. So things are getting better. Intel Arc GPUs are gonna be coming, so. Let, we'll see how it all turns out and uh, just keep an eye out. You never know if you'll stumble into a deal and you'll just be ready to build. So get subscribed and uh, of course come hang out on stream. It's actually a really, really good time and I'd love to hang out with you there. I can't wait to get started on this. I do have one, those three little things coming in. Well, I have two that are already here, one last surprise coming in and that one rear, in, rear exhaust fan and then we will be ready to do this full build. So I guess we'll see then. Uh, of course, stop by Sunday for my System Integrator's weekly videos. And uh, until then, take care. Thank you, Fuzzy. Thank you, man.